Hello everyone. This is a video from chapter 9 of a contemporary encyclopedia of literature of the Americas. This chapter is on early feminist writers. Are you ready? You know that feminism began in the end of the 19th century. Even before feminism began, there were many writers who wrote about women's experience against patriarchal oppression. So, in this chapter, we are going to talk about all those writers. Some of them were abolitionists who fought against slavery. Some of them were suffragette activists who stood for women's voting rights. You must have already heard about them in the previous chapters. Today, I will talk a little bit about them and also about new writers. Guys, in the 19th century, there was the feminist political movement, as you know. The feminist political movement gave importance to issues of education, equal education for all women wanted, and then the issue of labor. Women wanted equal employment opportunities, and then also voting rights or the suffragette movement. You must have already heard about this Seneca Falls Convention. That was the major event that happened on 19th and 20th July 1848 at a place called Seneca Falls. This was the beginning of the feminist movement in America. So many of the writers of the 19th century are early feminists because they were inspired by Seneca Falls Convention and such developments. Now, I will tell you about some major writers that you should look up on your own. I will not be dealing with all the writers in detail because some writers you should read because the greatest experience is in reading these writers, reading about them. I always remind you, do your own research. So, who are these early feminist writers that you should look up? This is homework, okay? Mercy Otis Warren. Mercy Otis Warren was a writer born in 1728. And she was friends with many leading figures of the day. She was also a writer and she published poetry. And her poems are dramatic poems, very... Uh, Philosophical poems, etc. Then there is another writer, Judith Sargent Murray. Maybe you never heard her name, but she wrote a very important essay on the equality of the sexes. Remember, this came in 1791, at the, about the same time as Vindication of the Rights of Women. In England, Mary Wollstonecraft wrote it. In America, on the equality of the sexes was written by Judith Sargent Murray. Then there is Anna Foster. She wrote a novel called The Boarding School. The Cockett is another novel that she wrote. Hannah Foster. Then Susanna Rousen. Remember this is homework. You should read extra about these writers. Well, Susanna Rousen was actually an English born writer. She was also an actress. And also a writer. She wrote a lot of novels. Okay, guys. And then Catherine Maria Sedgwick. Have you heard that name? She also wrote many uh, short stories and novels. Then Helen Hunt Jackson. She wrote a major work, A Century of Dishonor. Okay, these writers are your homework. Now, I'm going to tell you about a writer that you all must know. You must at least have heard the name, Kate Chopin. Kate Chopin was a novelist as well as short story writer. She was born in 
50. Remember, that was the year in which our William Wordsworth died and Tennyson became poet laureate. Very important year, 1850. She is considered a pioneer of uh, feminist literature because she created characters who are very strong, characters who come into self-awakening. Talk about it. Her most famous novel is The Awakening. The Awakening is the story of Edna Pontellier, an ordinary woman who suddenly realizes her own worth. She becomes creative and she becomes sexually and artistically awakened. She was a normal wife in a normal household and then she travels to a vacation spot and there she falls in love with a young man called Robert. Well, Robert does not accept her. He leaves her. But she realizes that there is something in her that is still beautiful and uh, creative. And she starts living that life. And then at the end, she happily commits suicide. She just goes into the ocean and commits suicide. Because in those days, women did not have many opportunities to assert their creativity or fulfill their ambitions. So she died, but she died happily. There's a very famous phrase. She died in the soft, close embrace of the sea. That is uh, the novel, The Awakening. You should read it, okay? That's very, very uh, remarkable, powerful novel. And there's also a slightly funny feminist short story that Kate Chopin has written. That also you must have heard of. And the short story is available in the internet. You can read it anytime. It is the story of an hour. There is an ordinary woman, again an ordinary wife, who does not even know that she is oppressed or unhappy. Her name is Louis. Louis uh, Mallard, that is her name. Louis one day hears that her husband has passed away. And at first she is shocked. But then she realizes that this means freedom. It doesn't mean that she did not love her husband or anything, but she didn't have freedom. She was like a caged bird, like every other woman was in those days and even in these days. Women's opportunities are very limited. And she feels that freedom and she is so happy. And then it turns out that her husband did not die. He had not died. He comes back home. And out of that shock, this woman, Louise Mallard, dies of a heart attack, of a cardiac arrest. That's a little funny, but also uh, sad and powerful. So these uh, stories of Kate Chopin depict very vital, powerful women characters who are like early feminists. Remember, early feminism is late uh, 19th century and early 20th century. And the second wave of feminism came in the 1960s. So these characters are actually, um, so to say, feminists. Well, Kate Chopin has written many other stories and novels that I have uh, discussed in the encyclopedia. If you do not have our American Literature Encyclopedia, you can always look it up yourself. I will tell you the names. Uh, the short stories, The Storm, The Locket, I have discussed in, in detail here. And also the novel, At Fault. Okay, so if you want to buy the encyclopedia, you can always go to bothheatrepublications.org and uh, order it for yourself. If not, no problem. You can just follow our YouTube videos and you can research on your own. Okay, next let me talk to you about Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Have you heard that name? Maybe you have because she's very famous. Charlotte Perkins Gilman was born in 18. 60 and she is very famous for that short story the yellow wallpaper have you heard of that okay so the yellow wallpaper is one of her semi-autobiographical short stories but certainly that is not the only work that charlotte perkins gilman has written she had a traumatic childhood her father left them and then uh, during her delivery she had postpartum a uh, postpartum depression and the doctor prescribed rest cure for her. Rest cure means women are confined in a room. They have to rest. 
for days and months on end without meeting anybody. It was almost like solitary confinement. And it is about this rest cure experience that she wrote a fantastic novel, sorry, short story, uh, The Yellow Wall Paper. Here there is an unnamed narrator. Her husband is a doctor and because she has depression, her husband prescribes a uh, rest cure for her that means she is confined in a room and there is yellow wallpaper in the room she does not meet anybody she cannot uh, communicate with anyone whole day she is in this room looking at this yellow wallpaper and she begins to imagine that there is a woman trapped inside this wallpaper she begins to hear sounds of that woman she begins to realize or feel that this woman is walking behind the walls and scratching the walls to come out and very soon this narrator becomes that woman she begins crawling all over the room scratching and tearing the wallpaper trying to come out of the wall she was like a trapped animal it was not just a fantasy this is a metaphor for her own existence for her life she was like a trapped animal inside her life and she's trying to come out of it. That is, an, oh, that is a short story, the yellow wallpaper. Did you like that? So this uh, short story is about themes like women's mental health, hysteria. There was at that time another disease attributed to women called neurasthenia. Hysteria. These are mental diseases that women got at that time because of oppression and pressure and uh, they were termed witches and they were beaten and uh, nobody understood them nobody really cared for them they were all confined to their domestic spaces without care and without appreciation for all the work they did that they do I feel sad because it's even now the condition for many women many women in your households are your mothers our mothers in fact uh, they are laboring away all the time, sacrificing their pleasures, cooking and cleaning and taking care of uh, the people. Do you ever feel like, mother, it's enough. You have cared for us for 50 years or 40 years or whatever. Now you should take rest. We'll care for you. Stop cooking. Stop cleaning. We don't want you to do anything. Just relax. Be creative. Uh, do what you want. Nobody ever tells women, do they? Well, things are changing. I should not be totally negative. Things are changing. There are lots of new opportunities for women. More and more um, people, men, husbands, sons, uh, daughters, they are beginning to realize that uh, the, the value of uh, mother's care or women's care is so much. That is what builds the society maybe. So things are changing. There's a lot of hope uh, because of the continuous uh, you know, awareness that is created about women's issues, etc. Lots of people have changed in our society. It's a beautiful world now. I should not um, deny that. So some of you will be thinking, why is she talking so much about women? And let me say, there are more works by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Are you wouldn't believe this. She wrote Women and Economics. Wow, she talked about women's opportunities, uh, her, their... Uh, you know, education and careers also in her works. Women and economics is something that you didn't expect Charlotte Perkins Gilman would write. And then she wrote Her Land. Wow. Her Land is a utopian novel. And there's a collection of stories that has an interesting title. When I was a witch. Remember, women's frustrations and problems led them to be branded as witches. And she titled her uh, works when I was a witch. That is Charlotte Perkins Gilman. She died in 1935. Now I'm going to talk about another important writer. You may have heard her name as well. Willa Cather. Willa Cather was born in 1873 and she's known for her environmentalist works set in the prairies. She is a prairie writer, American writer or a prairie writer or we can say novelist of the Great Plains in America. Now she wrote many works such as Alexander's Bridge that is her earliest uh, short story. 
not story <laughs> it is a novel sorry the alexander's bridge is a novel and uh, then there is a famous prairie trilogy prairie trilogy is a novel set in the prairies and there are three novels in this collection o pioneers o pioneers is actually a title taken from walt whitman then the second one is the song of the lark and the third one is also famous my antonia my antonia is the story of a rich immigrant called jim burden and a poor immigrant called antonia antonia struggles and uh, her uh, spirit of survival that is a the theme of my antonia then there is a very controversial novel called one of hours written by willa cather in one of hours uh, she had a very uh, problematic and conservative view of war so many writers and critics criticized her for writing this novel including our ernest hemingway one of ours came in 1922 same year as the wasteland and ulysses now she has written other works also which i have discussed in this book uh, i'm not going into that now there is a writer called sophie treadwell maybe you will not get a question about sophie treadwell in the exam because she is not as famous as willa cather or kate chopin but neurasthenia remember the mental uh, disorder that women got because of the pressures of urban life and patriarchy that she has written about in her very famous play machinal machinal is a play written by uh, sophie treadwell it's very famous and it's an expressionist and modernist play there is an unnamed woman whose name is maybe helen jones that name is also mentioned she is socially constrained and also trapped in a loveless marriage and you'll be surprised to do what she does what uh, cry the peacock protagonist did what is that she killed her husband and that is out of neurasthenia that is the name of a a uh, mental disorder the name was coined in the late 1880s by george beard an american psychologist so i have discussed that also here then there are some poets i have uh, talked about here they are also important edna st vincent millay dorothy parker elizabeth bishop edna st vincent millay and dorothy parker i am not talking about but elizabeth bishop is important elizabeth bishop is the author of a uh, many poetry collections including north and south that is a famous collection by um, elizabeth bishop she wrote the armadillo which actually inspired uh, robert lovell the later confessionist poet to write i think skankower skankower the poem and there's a very famous poem by elizabeth bishop called the fish you should read it it is about how the narrator catches a fish and she learns a lesson of resilience and uh, stoic you know strength from that fish and she lets loose the fish she lets it go that is the uh, poem the fish which is very interesting and lastly let me tell you about a short story writer you should definitely read the short story written by this writer this writer is shirley jackson born in 1916 and her short story which is very famous is the lottery in a, a small american town all the people are getting together and they are going to play the lottery or lucky dip and uh, there is a lot of description of their excitement and everybody is coming and uh, they are all standing in a queue and lo- lucky dip is taken and the name comes to one woman and she refuses and again the name is taken and you know at the end only we dis- we understand that the person who gets the lot has to be stoned to death has to be lynched by the others it is the turn to die that is coming at the end of lottery it is not any money or gift that you are getting oh my god and they do it for no reason they kill a person we are wondering what what is this about it is about the corrupt evil nature of tradition of habit and ritual sometimes we have to criticize tradition 
we can't just blindly follow everything in tradition and ritual sometimes it is it, it may have very inhuman and primitive and ignorant uh, practices that we are blindly following so that is what the lottery is about now guys there is something i really want to tell you uh, there is an excellent list of many important 19th century feminist writings that i've given in the encyclopedia uh, i will just mention a few the history of the condition of women in various ages and nations it is by lydia maria child lydia maria child is a very influential writer she also wrote an appeal in favor of that class of americans called africans now this uh, work is an appeal for equality and equal opportunity for africans in america and there is the abolitionist and suffragette movement people like the grimk sisters the grimk sisters are sarah and angelina grimk and you might also have heard of elizabeth cady stanton she was also part of our um, seneca falls convention sojourner truth who wrote ain't i a woman so like this maybe some 20 25 uh, works i have given here which are very very important Uh, you may also read on your own and research on your own this is a very important area that we have covered i hope you enjoyed this video please remember to like the video and subscribe if you don't mind and also you can share this video with your friends so that we can all learn together thank you very much i hope you're enjoying this series study well do your own research all the very best